This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Shirts for the Scene. Head over to thepopgoproject.com and you can purchase your favorite band t-shirt today. We are raising money for the local artist in Northeastern Pennsylvania whose income was drastically affected by COVID-19 in 2020. And although we're in a new year, bands will continue to struggle to perform like they once did. So grab a shirt, support a band. The proceeds of each sale go right to the bands whose shirt you are buying. Once again, head over to thepopgoproject.com and grab your shirt today. Shirts for the Scene is made possible by Axelrad Screen Printing. Visit them today at axelradarmy.com. My guest today spent a combined five years at The Weekender serving as an intern, an account executive, and online content manager. For those of you who don't know, The Weekender back in the day was the Bible when it came to arts and entertainment in Northeastern Pennsylvania. We had fun reminiscing about the parties, our coworkers, the bus trips with bands, and more. Welcome to the show, Tiffany Harm, or as I will forever know her as, T. Stein. Johnny. T. Stein, what's up? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. You will always be T. Stein to me forever. I think I'll be T. Stein for a lot of people. Yeah. Actually, it's funny because I called, well, we're just jumping in, but I yeah. called um, and ordered a deli tray and I never changed my caller ID. Who knew that you could change your caller ID on your cell phone? You just log into your cell phone account and you could change it to whatever, so... Good tip for you. A pro tip. Um, but I called and I ordered a deli tray from Wegmans and I sent Matt to go pick it up. <laughs> and he comes home and he's like, are you using your maiden name now? I'm like, no, I gave them, I actually gave him your name. And um, no, they, they apparently don't go by um, whatever name you're giving them. They just took the name right off caller ID. Um, so yeah, they had the deli tray under T Stein like a couple months ago. I'm like, okay. It's easy that way, right? Cool. Note the self, so but I don't go looking for something. It's good to see you. I have not seen you in person since my wedding, which was five and a half years ago. Has it really been that long? Yeah, June 2015. Yeah, I came, I uh, I moved back uh, kind of under the radar. Actually, funny story. So um, the girls started public school when they got here. So as a good Catholic, I put them in a CCD, which I'm not really even sure what those initials stand for, but it's like, religion classes for kids that still need to receive their sacraments. So I'm sitting there in my old high school, which is where they have the classes. And I'm like, oh my God, I've gone through like what, 25,000 years of Catholic education because King's College is Catholic. So is the University of Scranton, Jesuit College. And I'm like going through this in my head and I look to the corner of my eye and who do I flip and see but Damien? <laughs> like, Get out. What in Lucifer's reach are you doing here? <laughs> um, so it actually, it because it, <laughs> he didn't know I hadn't moved back either. So it was funny. We just like slid in together. And, and my oldest is like, we're supposed to be paying attention. And I'm like, okay, we are. We're just talking and catching up. Shh, pay attention. So he was like the first person that I saw that like didn't know I was back. And it was fun. And when did you move back? Almost a year, so, a year now? Yeah, I moved back. It was kind of like a shotgun move. I'm just like, you know, I'm done with Pittsburgh. We're done. Our social scene is like nil, if anything. Um, and we miss friends and family. So we moved back June, excuse me, June 2019. Okay, so a little uh, less than a year. Yeah, Half yeah. Year. And then, you know, we finally got into the groove of doing stuff in COVID. Yeah. Fun. So. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. What year is it? I don't even know what year it is. So, yeah, June... 2019 i'm thinking it's still 2020 so yeah you've been yeah. you've been back for a year and a half yeah jesus yeah. yeah okay i knew it felt longer i was like oh six months i can't do math again i don't know what year it is because covid is has taken over our lives so right here we are it is so it's i apologize but yeah so yeah you're getting you're kind of like you know settling in six months eight months and then you know yeah. you kind of get finding out where all the fun things to do is you know kid oriented um and then yeah yeah, it's it has not been uh, ideal. Yeah, it has not been ideal for anyone. It's been a terrible year. But um, so yeah, so Tiffany Stein. Well, I'm going to call her Tiffany Stein just because that's how I knew her when I met her. That's how I will always know her. Um, 
no matter what happens. Um, you were, you spent your, your, your time at the weekender was kind of similar to mine, although you started your path before me, but you started as an intern and then you were an account executive and then you moved, um, into a part-time role as a, uh, online content manager, um, before you eventually left us for good. But, um, yeah. So as far as the weekender goes, how did that all kind of play out? You went to King's college. I know that, uh, we never crossed paths there. I don't know. I don't know how or why. Um, yeah. but yeah, how, I mean, how, how did you start? We the both weekend? have a marketing degree. Like what, what happened there? Well, you're much older than me, Tiffany. I am. <laughs> Whoa. Are we starting there? <laughs> I am not that much older than you. You're, you're much, um, much older than me. <laughs> uh, sure. Sure. We're going to start with that. Um, no. So I don't know how we didn't cross paths. At least maybe I just hung out with the cooler people. Um, that's also possible. But I don't know. Didn't we have, we had to do an internship, I think, right? Yes. Okay. Um, cause I already had a full-time job, so I don't think I would have wanted to add nothing like additional stuff onto my plate. So, um, yeah, the weekender internship was like presented to me by, um, Chris Bedwick, I think was working at the, at Kings yes. then in the, um, whatever they call that department. And so I interned at the weekender in the marketing department. Um, and then right when I graduated, uh, they, well, before I graduated, they opened a position because they were uh, expanding the territory to past Scranton, um, you know, that area up there. Um, and I applied for the job. I interviewed for the job. And I think I actually started like the Monday after graduation, like really tough, seriously. <laughs> Overachiever. Um, but yeah, so um, then I started in the sales position and um, within three months, uh, the Kingston territory opened up and I'm like, can I please transfer down to here? Um, so I handled both of those territories <laughs> at once until they found a replacement for there. So I think I was traveling like 120 miles a day, day. yeah, just to collect ads and, but and fun money. stuff. And money, right? pretty money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know I if you were. Mine was all credit cards. How did you pull that off back then? Well, I had to get a new car. Well, no, but no. How did you how did you get the clients to pay you using a credit card? Because I I was in sales after you and trying to get them to like mail a check even was like, what you're why don't you just come here and get one? Like Huh. Well, I mean, I think I picked up some checks um from the bars that were like closed, but um I don't know. That was a new territory. So I kind of didn't really give them an option. Um, I was just like, you have to prepay. Yeah. Because I'm not coming back up tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, for sales, I think we called it, right? Because then when the web started, we we're just like, and you can get the web added on for additional blah, blah, blah dollars. But we're not going to tell you about that because it's built in. Yeah. But they still didn't want to do it because they were scared of it because they didn't know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. But, what are you drinking? That was a small can. Oh yeah. No, no. This just makes me feel bigger. Um, this is just a Diet Coke. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm doing this one sober, which wow. is rare. This is I rare. feel honored. See now, um, I'm an adult, like uh, oh, much older than you, as you much say. Much older. Yes. So I, um, start with coffee until it's socially acceptable to switch over to wine. Um, <laughs> what time is that? Was that noon? No, dude, it's just bored. I mean, it's just sitting there. So, uh. Okay. We're still on coffee. All right. That's a little uh, premature, though, I think. No, I didn't even... It's just poured. Yeah, but like, who does that? Who pours it like an hour in advance? Well, I wasn't going to pour it in the middle of our conversation. Uh, okay. I All right. I understand. So you're preparing for... Okay. I'm sorry. A long I'm sorry. I'm sorry. conversation. I'm sorry. It could be. I mean, these have been going much longer than I anticipated them to. Yeah, um, Lella was two hours. Two, yeah, two, wow. four, no, 220, 220. Yeah, it's been great though, you know, just kind of, you know, traveling back in time and, and catching up and, and talking about the good old days. But so I, I want to get back to that. So it, you were, you, you did an internship with The Weekender? Yes. And then I interned 2013 or 20, oh, 2003. 
2003. And then I started in 2004 uh, as a sales account executive. And then um, somewhere along those lines, I uh, thought that I wanted to become a teacher. So I went back to school um, while working full time uh, to the U and got my uh, master's in education. And that's actually why I switched over to part time, which is um, a farce because 30 hours a week, I don't think should be considered part time. But well, Tiffany, I think 38 hours is uh, considered full time now. So, oh, it, really? I what? think it's 38. I mean, you, you didn't really work 38 hours because most of it was like after, after yeah. the normal hours. Nine to five, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the part time, oh my gosh, that was doing all that web stuff. I remember for Christmas that year, um, cause we did secret Santa, um, the Christmas before I switched over to online content manager, um, Lello had me and, um, <laughs> he gave me a, um, HTML for dummies book. And I'm like, okay, thanks for the work related <laughs> gift, but <laughs> I'm gonna read did that. you need it did you need it I did because I mean HTML was completely new to me and like we were as Lelo said in his like our internet was weird and wonky and like everything was built into HTML and you know the paragraphs and all that stuff and I don't know maybe it's like that today but I mean the web page that I do today isn't like that I I rarely have to go into HTML but yeah our old website was all HTML which was just not fun. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. Thankfully. Well, you could borrow my HTML for dummies <laughs> book. It's still on a bookshelf somewhere. Oh, perfect. Is that the same year that get that to you? I can't I wait. That. Was that the same year that I had Janelle pick up her own gift? <laughs> oh, from Sapphire. Yeah. Yes. I think it was. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, that should have been the last secret Santa for the office because the gifts. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was a great gift for Janelle. It just happened to be she was picking up her own gift. Right. That's well, funny. Yeah. So I was getting one like from a whole bunch of who had you? Did I have you? I think somebody I whoever remember. had you had gave you all those like desktop games and and you played them. Like Of course I did. I'm a child. You know, like not like you had work to do or anything, but nah. Nah. <laughs> let's play tabletop basketball. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time. Um, I remember I, I first, so I started as an intern and it was cool because you you were always the first person to kind of take me under your wing, I guess you could say. I know. Why would they do that? Remember that one time where we were out until like, I don't even know, way past the bars were even open and they're like, T-Stone, we sit with John today and show him the ropes on how to, I'm like, really? Like, what? I'm like, <laughs> I've been here like a couple months. Like, what okay and that was the day that we just like ordered dominoes and stuffed envelopes all day <laughs> i think we ordered what? um papa john's yeah oh yeah it was papa john's papa john's um, yeah. yeah i had this brilliant idea that we were going to go through all of the old um ad records and send a letter to everybody saying hey we missed you what's up here's my contact information uh, i'm going to come visit you but i don't want to do it cold um, right. That's what we did. Was that's I an cool. intern at that point or was that full time? Well, I certainly hope you weren't getting paid for that, but yeah. I can't I remember. You were an intern. I can't remember. There were so many wild times that we had at that, that newspaper. Entertainment Weekly, rather. Yes. The newspaper. number one arts and entertainment weekly in NEPA. Yeah. <laughs> the elevator pitch. What were some of your favorite moments from, from back then? Um... Wow, there's so many. Like, I mean, obviously the nights out were fun and all of that stuff that we got to be able to do. But I think that like it really opened a lot of a lot of different paths for me that I wouldn't have done. Like, um, I mean, I'm in development now, fundraising, and I always attribute liking that to sales because it's sort of the same thing. You know, you're telling a story and you're trying to get someone to support your story. And and that's what sales was at the weekender. Um but I also loved writing. And I mean, I got to tour NEPA for several years and do all of the haunted houses. And that was so much fun. Um, and remember when we went on the road with the bands? Um, that was, that was fun. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, stuck in my head is the the one where we did with Panacea. And I remember you and I were like, I picked you up and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm just, I'm exhausted. And that was the first time you're like, T-Stein, we got to go to Turkey Hill. We got to get you some monsters. And I'm like, monsters? <laughs> like I was only drinking Red Bull at the time. Um, we got these monsters and and it was like, we walk on Panacea's bus and like the very first thing we're like, what in the hell is that in the corner? And Polly's like, it's a ficus. And I'm like, why do you have a real plant on your bus? <laughs> like, what? Um, and then we went to that bar in Scranton and corkscrews, yeah. Yeah. And I just remember you going like, <laughs> you were always so protective, which I really appreciate. And you're like, T Stein, the bathroom's here. They're co ed. You might want to go easy. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go at all in a co-ed bathroom, <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> oh my God. And then we were up to like, what, five in the morning? Oh yeah. We went to Andy's diner after that. Yeah. It was out of control. Um, I think all of our band stories, we ended up going to breakfast with them. Remember yeah. when we did M80? Yeah. We walked from your mom's house. Yeah. Because they were at what? What was that bar called? Uh, it's, Leary's? It was Leary's. Leary's and now it's, it was Leary's. Now it's, or, or O'Leary's, Leary's, whatever. Um, and remember like Les like knew that we were going to be there somehow and sent those weird guys walking down my mom's street. Yeah. yeah it was, it was really strange. He <laughs> like, is... How did you even know where we were going to be Les? <laughs> um, and like that, yeah, we went to breakfast with, with him and a couple of the other people and at Ollie's Mm -hmm. Um, and we had like the whole place to ourselves and I'm sure we're a little annoying. Oh, hundred percent. So good thing we had the place to ourselves. Yeah. Good thing we didn't have camera phones either back then. Right. (laughs) And you know what? I mean, I have a box full of pictures of like the ones that were all printed from the throwaway cameras and the cameras I used to take out and, um, Thankfully, I didn't open up that memory lane before I got on this call. But um, even like MySpace, a lot of our pictures ended up there. And um, it was just fun. And now like my state, my space is like on lockdown. I can't even get in it. Like, I know that's my password. It's my, been my password for decades. Let me in. But no. Yeah. And let's not forget the reader's choice parties. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, or... I have forgotten them because I wasn't, I was there, but uh, yeah, I wasn't there. I mean, Reader's Choice was a lot of work. It was. I mean, before, after, during was always a lot of work. So I like to repress the Reader's <laughs> Choice memories. Um, I, I choose to stay um, memory, remembering the uh, Contifer causes and uh, the model of the year party was still even work too. Yeah. Um, a concert for a cause, I think, because Alan, you know, did the brunt work of all of that. Like, and we just showed up as showed like up, yeah. celebrities announcing all the bands. Um, so I like I saw the- pictures of us uh, drinking those shark. Was it shark bowls down in the, at the woodlands on the deck? Uh-huh. Before. Before, yeah, Before. not a good idea. Yeah, we kept those sharks. We, we brought them into the office. Well, yeah, they were they were our mascots at the office for a while. <laughs> My cat is going to get murdered here. Get out of here. This is our lives now, like just Zoom calls and, and cats. Oh, I don't have cats. Cats are sneaky. Huh? I don't like cats. You don't like cats? No, I think they're sneaky. They're always up to something. Yeah, but they're... My poor cat is clearly up to something. It's going to be in the back of you walking around soon. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. But no, I mean, I think some of my favorite times um, were in the era that you were in. Cause I, you know, you started in 04, I started in 05, but I was an intern in 04. So I kind of like was there. Uh, but then we had, you know, Damien, it was always a riot and we had, it was kind of like our row back. It was like, you, it was yeah. you, you, me, and then Damien, right? Yeah. On that side of the yeah. cubicles? Well, yeah. From the, yeah. From the back to the, yeah. 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 You got that. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. And like. 
the bus trips with Panacea to like Philly or whatever. They yeah. Came on that one. They did the Battle of the Bands. Is that what that was? Yeah. You. I don't yeah. remember that. Did you do? I just remember you being very heartbroken um, at Montage when they when they defaced the Weekender. Um, I I I wasn't heartbroken. Um. I felt like I was, I took, I took the brunt of, they were upset and rightfully so. I mean, we did put every logo that was going to be there except for them. And I'm not sure what the reasoning was because, you know, we weren't involved in, in cover conversations that was all editorial, but um, yeah, it was, I, cause we, we had been with them for so long. So it's not that I was heartbroken. I took it personal and I shouldn't have because those, they're all really great guys. And, um, I think it was because I was the only one there, um, that I saw that show. Like I saw the show saw it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Oh, come on now. <laughs> but, um, I think that was like the one concert that I went to that I worked that I didn't wear a weekender shirt. So like, I was like, okay, whatever, put my tail between my legs and walk away. They're doing their thing. So it definitely wasn't on purpose. Leaving them out. Yeah. I don't think. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to have that conversation with the next person from editorial. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember who it was. I don't remember who was the designer at that time. Um, because I think Damien was gone at that point. Well, that it might have been Michael. No, I don't think so. I think that I mean, if these conversations have done nothing but prove that Michael did what he was supposed to do and what he was told to do, so if he was <laughs> told to put a panacea on there, then he was he would have done it. But yeah, um, I don't think it would have been a Michael decision either. And by the way, can I say that I spent, I think, three weeks out of every month with Michael threatening to tie me to the railroad tracks <laughs> um, because my ads would either be late or whatever, whatever hot heated reason he had to be mad at me for that moment. He's just like, T. Stein, I'm going to tie you to the railroad tracks if you send me one more change. And I'm like, OK, sorry. Oh, we won't get into to Mike. We won't even say his last name because he's he's a man of of God. He would never do that. Oh, aren't we? Oh, I mean, I started this conversation saying that I go to CCD classes with my daughter. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, the good times though, and I, and you just found out recently that they um, they have since covered up our weekender mural. Yeah. I wasn't happy about that. So I don't remember. Was that your conversation with Lelo that you talked about that? And I'm like, hmm, no, I think it was Leslie. Leslie, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I commented and I'm like, yeah, we definitely did not have permission to do that. I believe that Rachel was on some sort of, I don't know, cross-country conference that she went to. Um, and Alan was just in his office with the door closed. So we're like, yeah, this place needs a spruce. Let's do something. And like, we just like... I don't actually ever remember Alan saying anything because he had to have come out at one point because we did that. We started on a Friday and we were done on a Sunday. He had to have come out at one point and like saw a completely black wall. Um, and like, I, I mean, maybe I wasn't there when he had a comment, but like. I don't remember. I, I don't remember. For certain. <laughs> but I yeah, only remember. So- I messaged, I have a couple friends that still work at the TL and I messaged and I'm like, Hey, can you confirm that the weekender wall is gone? And, and the, you know, the response was, of course it's gone. We we redid the whole building. Like, why wouldn't it be gone? And I'm like, well, it's historical. Obviously. Yeah. You think, right? Um, I mean, it was a piece of art for crying out loud. It, but yeah. I mean, I, you know, that started a rabbit hole. Cause then I'm like, well, I wonder what they did with all of the other cool weekender garb and historical stuff. And you know, the marketing closet that had all the swag that was on lockdown because Johnny weekender wouldn't let anybody have it. That's, that's the only thing I had when I was there was the, uh, the key to that closet. The only thing you controlled in yeah. life was the <laughs> marketing. Closet. I was told, I was told, Rachel told me, do not let anyone in here under any circumstance she said they will try to con you into 
letting them in. But mm. uh, and it's not like there was like fun stuff. No, there wasn't. I mean, there was pint glasses and shot <laughs> glasses. T-shirt. There was tattoos that burned people's skin and <laughs> magnets, t-shirts. T-shirts were a hot commodity, but you know, it wasn't like it was the deck series t-shirts in there that like people really wanted. Yeah. I still have my weekender jacket. I did text you that I was going to wear my weekender jacket. Um, and then I found it uh, at the basement, like uh, on the floor in like a heap of laundry. I don't know why, because I don't wear it. Um, but I'm like, no, not going to wear this. So I, I forgot to look for mine. I know it wouldn't fit me now. I'm uh, much larger than I was uh, back then. Yeah. That's why I drink these small cans. I, 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 it makes me feel, no, it doesn't work. I should, make, I should be drinking bigger cans to be made to feel yeah. smaller. Oh, here, yeah. whatever. You've got a mighty big microphone there, so that works. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, it just, I feel, and then this is a common you know, theme through everyone I'm th- that I'm talking to, was just that it was just a, such a great place, and we all felt like we were family. And I, I remember, like, you, I've always felt like you were the sister I never had. Uh, and I felt like that with all you guys and well, not just the, the girls, I guess I could say like you and Janelle and Katie and Leslie and, you know, whoever else came along. But uh, it's so true. I mean, you were at my bachelorette party, which was co-ed. So let's just put that on the table. <laughs> um, was that a Sununas? Like a weirdo. Um, yeah, it started at Arena and um, Katie and Janelle I think Leslie was there for a little bit of it. Nikki, of course, because she was like, we were tight. Um, and then we moved it over to Sununas's. Yeah. So I think it, I met you at Sununas. I yeah. don't think I was there for the whole time. Yes, that's true. But, you weren't there for the yeah. rest of the bachelorette extravaganza. Yeah. But no, it was such a such a close knit. And we and we'd fight sometimes as like we were brothers and sisters it was it was just a a interesting dynamic yeah i can't remember any of like the the big fights that we would get into but there were like i do remember there being like some heated arguments and obviously over stupid shit now but um i can't remember but you know what? Like, it's funny because you say that, like, we were like family, like we truly were. And like, we knew, like, we were beyond like finishing each other's sentences. Like we knew how the person was by just looking at them. Like when they walked in, like, I mean, Katie always like used to say, like, she knew how my night was before by like what I was walking in with the next day. Like if I had like an orange iced tea from Turkey Hill and a bag of baked lays, like, you know, I had a good night. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> other days it was like coffee, you know. Yeah. Now, but, back yeah, good. Do, when you say good night, was that like a uh, like you were home and in bed at a reasonable hour, or good night well, as in the coffee mornings when I was home in bed at a reasonable hour? But like when I had to go like straight hardcore to Turkey Hill iced tea, like I was out way too late, <laughs> way too late. late. You and I had a th- like we. I don't know. I don't know how we did that. Like. I don't know. Maybe this is just a world that I don't really still understand, but like bars stay open past two o'clock if you're the right person. Um, and like you and I would be out until like sometimes five or six in the morning, like the sun would be up when we would be coming home. And I'd be like, I, I mean, let's just say staying out until five or six o'clock in the morning has seriously prepared me for motherhood because now I don't need to <laughs> operate with sleep because of the right. weekender. So thank you weekender for allowing me to live life without sleep um but remember that one time we were at hops and bounce is like oh i've got a cool place to go afterwards was that exit six <laughs> no it was like uh, i'm gonna go there but it was like someone's I, I don't know i feel like we were in like the basement of someone's garage like do garages have basements was that jimmy finn's house i don't know i really don't know i don't know either it was up like in Courtdale somewhere. Well, here's the thing. I mean, and I remember like bounces like, "Come on, T Stein, I'll give you a piggyback ride there." And I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. See, the thing is, if you're if you're out after two o'clock, I always say nothing good happens after two o'clock. Um, but I mean, we weren't like 
we didn't do anything bad. Well, no, like, but I mean, like, it was just there's... hanging out. I don't even remember, like, it wasn't like we were getting like swashbuckled or even like, you know, like oh, we were... I was, I can't remember oh. this. I, I, I have flashbacks, like, like just flashes of those moments. And I, 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 I think it may have been Jimmy Finn's house. I think, oh. I, don't I don't remember. Know Jimmy Finn is, but I now have realized why you are doing these podcasts because there is a, obviously a period of your life that you have missing pieces of and you need us all to fill in the blanks for you a hundred percent yes this is <laughs> this is a complete selfish move uh by me uh <laughs> no but i was for you guys too i mean i think you know these are these are moments of our lives that i think kind of shaped uh our futures um yeah totally like um again so like i'm in development so like i i know i i remember there being like a not a skirmish but like um everybody in sales was like up in arms at the weekender because they were changing the territories remember this i don't know if you were an intern or if you had just started full time but they were changing they were realigning the territories and like i was like oh we cannot realign the territories like i literally just got this territory and like that like that moment I look back on now is like that, that I was fighting for stewardship. I was fighting for my clients because I had just met them. I was just give, getting a bond with them. And that's how you upsell your clients when, you know, they trust you and they trust what you're advising them to do. And, um, and I was like, just so mad that like, I'd have to go and meet like, a, and, and it wasn't like, I wasn't mad because I didn't want to, like, I was mad that I had to start a relationship with somebody else when I haven't built the relationships with the clients that I already had. And, and again, like, that's all like, I mean, that's what development is. It's stewardship. It's, it's getting to know people. And, and so I remember that part of the weekend there. And um, again, like certainly the writing aspect of everything, like that's pretty much what I do now is write. So um, yeah. But yeah, so <clears throat> you left the uh, weekender in 2008. What did you do after that? Yeah. So I moved to Pittsburgh. Um, Which, why would you do that? I mean, Pittsburgh, I don't like Pittsburgh. I'll tell you why. Too many bridges. Okay. You Too many bridges. bridges? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also hate Steelers fans. So. Oh, all right. Well, I didn't, I'm not a Steelers fan and I didn't build the bridges. So no person <laughs> can on me. Thank you. But you moved to Pittsburgh. I did move to Pittsburgh. Um, Matt was already out there and um, I had graduated from the U uh, at the end of May. Um, so I moved out there and I was a stay at home fiance uh, for a couple months because it's hard finding a job in a city that you don't know, you know, you had no, I didn't know anybody. Um, and I ended up actually working for uh, Pittsburgh public schools and their development office. And that's how like I even knew what development was. Um, I did sub a few times uh, because you know, I have that new degree um, in education. And I'm like, holy shit, what, what is I thinking? Like, no, no, not going to teach. Nope. No. Um, Why not? Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I feel like I went into the whole teaching degree with like a, this, um, with rosy colored glasses on, like, it's going to be fun. We're going to do lessons and everybody's going to love math and just like me. And, and no, 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 you have to deal with parents and, and crazy little kids that are screaming and, you know, throwing stuff at each other. No. So I subbed for like three times and I'm like, nah, I'm out. So, um, but I always felt like my degree got me where I was because I, I don't think I would have gotten into Pittsburgh Public Schools had I not had an education degree. Um, and then, you know, I stayed there for another four years. That seems to be my, my clock, four years at a place. Um and then I moved on to another development job and, and had my oldest child at that point. And then um, I stayed home with her for a couple months um, and really just loved being a mom with her, which was so much fun. And then um, sometime during that time, uh, Matt had met somebody who was looking for a grant writer, but like they didn't want them to come into the office. They just wanted them to focus on grant writing and be home. And I'm like, hi, hi. Perfect. Um, I'll do that. So I did that. And I stayed home with Livy and then Veronica, um, gosh, for three and a half years working. Like I was literally burning the candle at both ends. I would wake up 
really early in the morning and do some grants until they woke up and that I'd play with them and take them out and tire them out. And then during their naps, I would write more grants. And when they'd go to bed, I'd stay up and write more proposals. And like, again, the weekend prepared me for no sleep Um, because it was rough. Working from home was two under two is is not as fun as it seems. Well, that's, that's funny you say that because um, I even before the pandemic hit, when people were kind of forced to you know be home with their children, which I think is a blessing and a curse, but I think every mom or every woman wants to be a stay-at-home mom until they're a stay-at-home mom because yeah. it's not easy. I mean, I, <clears throat> I got a little taste of of that life, you know, when uh, this all the pandemic hit. You know, fortunately for me, I was like, my wife had to go to work every other day, so you know, there was days where we were both home, which was a lot more manageable, but I mean, yeah. trying to get work done and having a child and making sure they don't like jump off the couch and break Kill their them. necks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, uh, it's, 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 it's hard for sure. Yeah. So I, a lot of respect for, uh, you know, what you did and all the moms out there who are, uh, you know, stay at home moms and doing all that kind of, kind yeah, of stuff. Like you learn to, appreciate like smaller things in life. Like it was a successful day if I showered and nobody died. Yeah. Bar set right there. Are they alive? We're good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then after that, um, when Georgia, my third was bored, uh, born, I, I went back to work. So I'm like, no way. <laughs> I'm out. I'm not even opening up that idea of working with from home with three kids. And at that time, like my oldest was already in, preschool or kindergarten at that point my middle was obsessed with the ipad and even when i would bring in nannies like she would be like no nanny just sit here i'm gonna watch the ipad i'm like i'm not paying a nanny to watch you play on the ipad so i sent her to like preschool when she was three um just so that she wouldn't become a blockhead um (laughs) i haven't heard that term in a long time we need to bring back words like that um but yeah when I, i i started having ideas to move back here and um, and I approached my boss and I'm just like, I'm just not happy. And, and, and she's like, you know what, let's, let's try and see if we can keep you on as a consultant and you can move and, and see how that works. And, um, when I moved back, they started, um, I was on like a six month consultant cycle, um, where my contract would get renewed and then COVID hit and everybody had to work from home. And then like my contract would be extended for a year um, so yeah, so I've been, I, I have this work from home mentality under my belt for a long time. So, um, but now with virtual school and I don't know, I don't have that many computers or rooms for everybody to have their own space. And yeah, I mean, I, the first week, so the girls are at in Catholic school now because CCD, not for me. Um, I mean, I love all the people there, but, um, I really wanted them to have that small Catholic school environment that I really loved when I was little. Um, so yeah, the first week that they were in, in virtual reality, I just, I was working on the couch because my youngest was still like, I eat everything that I pick up and my <laughs> other ones in the playroom in like a completely chaotic world in there with her computer and my other ones upstairs in another room with her computer. And I'm like running back and forth between all three of them. And like, I hit my step count before 11 o'clock that day, that first day of virtual learning, like <laughs> steps were done. Like check that off of my to-do list. Yep. I'm good. But yeah, virtual learning is crazy. And, um, I'm lucky again that I have a really, really supportive working environment and my boss is super supportive that like, um, like for zoom calls, like, I'll just be like, okay, I'm going to go on, uh, I'm going to turn my computer out or turn my video off because here comes somebody asking for something. And I think I may have turned my youngest into Pavlov's dog by accident because like when people would start calling for like meetings, I'd be like, here's candy here, go take some chocolate. Right. Um, so now literally every single time my phone rings, she is in my ear asking me for a piece of candy. And I'm like, hold up. This is just gee. It's just, it's just grandma. Like you're not getting candy. Yeah. Like <laughs> go do something. <laughs> and like, I have to break that <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Um, like I remember that guy, like when I think it was when COVID first hit, remember that video of that guy, um, in the UK and like his daughter's like coming out of the, the, the walker and the nanny like comes in and like pulls the daughter and like he's on live television on CNN. Do you remember that video? I must have missed that. 
And I'm like, oh my God, that would be like the least of my worries if like somebody just walks by. I would love for somebody just to walk by. You know, what my worries are is when my daughter comes over in the middle of a Zoom to tell me that she needs her diaper changed. Like those are the mom worries of working from home. (laughs) Like I would give anything for my daughter to be just walking by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My kid ended up writing in with ink an ink, an ink pen um, because like he'd come in and kind of start bothering me. I'm on calls or whatever. So like my notebook would be next to me. I gave him my pen and he would scribble and he must've just taken off with it. Um, <clears throat> next thing I knew, I walked into the, the living room and the couch was covered in ink pen. Uh, I, I couldn't even be mad at him. Did I couldn't you even, you know, couch? huh? Did you throw out the couch? No, we got it out with uh, alcohol. Alcohol. Um, yeah, not like Miller Lite. the day. <laughs> not 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 like Miller Lite, but but yeah, it's it was just yeah, it's wild. And then you have three of them too, which that's crazy. Yeah. Um. Somebody's always crying. How old are they now? Um, eight, six, and three. Okay. Yeah. And I love the pictures of them as um. Hocus Pocus. Yes. As, uh, yeah. N- nailed it. They have, so my oldest is equally obsessed with Hocus Pocus as I am. And I feel like it started around before we even had our third daughter, like she wanted to do Hocus Pocus, but I don't know, like kids have this sixth sense about life that you just don't know where they're getting it from. And she's like, no, I'm going to wait. I, I want to wait. And I'm like, huh? Interesting. Why do you want to wait? Like, I'll be the third sister with you. Like, what? Is that not cool? Um, But yeah, so like, then we had our third and um, I kept telling her, I'm like, do it, do it now before like everybody has their own opinion about like what they want to be for Halloween. And I don't know, like I was never a mom that wanted to like dress my kids up the same way. Like I, I fought against that. Like I didn't want that. And like, they love that. They, they flip and love it. And I'm like, really? And like, even with Halloween costumes, I'm like, go do whatever you want to be. Like, tell me and I'll make it or we'll go and buy it. And they're like, no, it's, it's Libby's turn to pick this year. So we're going to do this. And I'm like, what, when did this happen? Like, what, what, why are we taking turns picking what each other is going to wear? And, but they, I mean, they work, it works for them. So yeah, this is the year that they finally decided to be Hocus Pocus. And we usually get Christmas pictures done every year. And I'm just like, no. We're totally going out to the woods and getting a professional photo shoot with Hocus Pocus. And it was amazing. Yeah. I love, I mean, I've never met your children before, obviously. Um, Just some of their faces uh, that you, that they make the pictures that you post. uh, They just seem like they have a lot of uh, (laughs) personality. And then there's the one, I don't, and I don't know which one's which, but uh, just like, couldn't care less about some things like I don't know (laughs) they're a riot they're all like me in in one way or another like Livy is loud like me and she's got a good sense of humor like me and Matt and um like I I said I said to you when we were doing this conversation like you have to tell me when we're going to do it because like they're loud like louder than me at a bad hair day show like they're loud um so they can't even be here (laughs) to do this conversation Mm -hmm. um but yeah they're like it's fun and like I don't know. I've always pictured myself as a girl mom. So glad that worked out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Three of them. Jeez. Uh, yeah. It's fun. They're loud. They're fun. They're emotional. They're wearing heels already. So life's, life's good. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to see, you know, all of us grown up, you know, cause like I always say, and I'll, I'll go back to 2005. So we're 15 years removed from, from then, obviously. And uh, our lives are a complete, you know, you know, 180 years. Yeah. Wow. You know, well, I mean, I know that everybody says it in your show and like life does move so quick, but it does feel like just yesterday that we were like out having so much fun. And, and I feel like that's because we're all so close and we could just pick up right where we left off. Isn't like, that I neat? was texting Damien before this, like just, throwing up emojis just because I was anxious and um partly because I'm like oh I don't really have that many I mean I have memories and like memory lane obviously is open but uh you know like 
I don't know if I have that many to like to feed up a, a podcast for you. But Damien's like, you're fine. You're going to do great. Just shut up and do it. I'm like, okay, thanks. Yeah, you kind of did um, kind of jump over. I, I remember a lot of stuff that we that we did. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go back. I'm try- Well, I'm trying to think uh, uh, now that I'm kind of put on the spot. I just, you know, I guess maybe we did talk about them, you know, just panacea trips and and bad hair day and well, not bad hair day uh m80 at leary's and oh my god though but bad hair day seriously uh, really i those guys all just deserve a reward for or an award for putting up with me and <laughs> everybody like seriously like i i mean i mean we all have a lot of friends that like fangirl over all the local bands in the area but like yeah I remember Alan put us on a task that I don't remember which concert for cause it was. Maybe it was five, it was four. It was definitely a one-handed number. Um, and he's like, go get the band's picture, putting up the hand for whatever concert for cause it is. That was going to be like our promo. And like, remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, and like Bad Hair Day was the last one that we had to get. And like the only time we were able to um see them was like the St. Patrick's Day Tinks parade day and and you know like I, so that's one picture that I do remember like you know how you have like mental memories of like mm-hmm. things that happened I remember I got that picture of Todd and I don't know how or what I mean I don't know I, I doubt he had his own camera while he was singing but I have a picture from his angle of me um <laughs> like dancing like like or doing like the same like five that we were asking him to do and i'm like did i hand him my camera like what happened there maybe he can fill in the blanks but um at the parades now i mean let's get real those were too much (laughs) i my first one was 2006 i remember we got a limo yes so okay my first one was obviously 2003 when i was an intern Um, but I was coming in at that point with the bar for the parades being set like up to here because that's all they talked about was how crazy the last year's parade was. So when you have Joe student and Christy and Rachel on, like you have to have them tell the story of the parade because apparently at that point, um, the Scranton parade was still doing floats. And I don't know if this is the reason why they don't do floats anymore, but like the weekend or float like fell off of the parade. I don't know the whole story, but I'm like, oh my God, is it going to be that crazy? But I remember, oh God, we got in, we got in limo that year too. And we went to some corner bar that we were all friends with. Well, not me, but like the guy, like Joe student and Christy and them were friends with them. And like, we had kegs and eggs and it was like seven in the morning. And, and you're like, who even wants to be up at seven in the morning, let alone smelling and drinking kegs and eggs. But, yeah. but you know, you do it cause it's fun. And, and I remember also that one year, like you were trying to be all like responsible and you're like, I'm not going to have that much to drink. So, you know, I'm going to plan this event down at river grill the night of the parade. And we're all like, John, are you serious? Like, are you really, I don't know if that's how that played out. Really? That's because, the memory that I have in my head. Um, I do remember that. Um, it was, was like, the, it was, was it the Guitar Hero or was it like some lip syncing competition? Uh, yeah, it was some kind of um, karaoke or something like that. I think that was 2006. I remember that. I, re- I remember, I don't remember how that happened that way. Um, but yeah, I remember like being partying at the parade and going home sleeping thinking i would like somehow sober up right because that happens yeah that didn't happen and then i went back out i remember my buddy tj uh came with me that night um i almost got in a fight that night at river girl i don't know if i was dancing with somebody yeah i do remember you almost getting into a fight yeah i think i was like dancing with somebody um and their boyfriend or whatever he was didn't like it. I don't. I don't remember. You dancing with him? No, I wasn't dancing with him. <clears> that was harmless. Right. You <laughs> yeah. I think that was yeah. your your uh, 
your excuse. Like, but I'm Johnny Weekender. Maybe. I don't remember. I really don't. I, I remember being there. I remember TJ was there. I remember someone threw ice at somebody else. Um, but yeah, that was 06. And then I remember 2007. Was this the wilkes Bear Parade? I forget. I, it, it's all, it's, it's, I used to have a great memory of, of like that time period. But like, as I'm getting older, there's just too much other things being, that my brain's being filled with. Um, but we, we went to, was it that bar in Swearsville? Oh, it's still there. on the corner. Yes. Um, shoot. I drive by it every day. Isn't it an Irish name? Yes. Somebody comment. God, I can't <laughs> remember. I can't remember. But that may have been the Wilkes Bear Parade, or it may, I don't. Maybe it was after the the Scranton Parade. I forget. It was after, because they had a bagpiper, and I flipping loved it. I have a lot of pictures from that as well. It was after the Scranton Parade. We loved the Scranton Parade because that was like the second year that we had all been doing it, and and we're like, okay, we're th- that first year when we got the limo was just a bad idea. Like, who yeah, we in their right mind thought that it would be a good idea to get a limo up to a parade when we would eventually have to drive. Yeah. So, um, Boylan's. Yes. You just looked that up. I didn't. I was actually going to, and then I remembered it. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was after Scranton. But then I think after that limo, we started riding my uncle's fire trucks. In the Wooks bear parades. Yeah. We did the Scranton one too. Oh, did we? Yeah. Maybe I started boycotting the Scranton parades. No, because you guys, the last one that I remember that we did with my uncle in Scranton was um, we got there early, obviously, because you had to park yeah. and like get to your staging area. Um, and then we all like went, well, I think it was too early for me too. Because like, again, like this is like too early to do anything, let alone drink yeah. or smell it. Like smelling is a big thing. And like, <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, you guys all went over to Cooper's. Okay, I do remember that. My mom has a picture of me in that parade because she went because my my uncle asked my nephew at the time to do it to Alan to go with us, and I think he was like five maybe. Um, and again, I did not go to Cooper's with you, but I look like I had been up all night in the picture. Like I have sunglasses on, but like you can still see like he's tired. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, she has it on her wall. Like, it's just one of those, those things that like you look at and you just have flashes of memories of that moment. Um, but yeah, the, the parades were fun. Um, not walking in them, but you know, riding the fire truck was fun. Yeah. I remember wanting to be on or in the bars rather than being, you know, walking the the streets of Scranton, which I feel like maybe prior to that they were in the bars more as opposed yeah, to well, being well so yeah that is actually what happened that year that we got the um the limo we didn't walk in the parade i think we uh if i'm remembering correctly i think we forced the interns to walk for us and the oh, staff boy. did a pub crawl yeah remember because then we sold ad space because apparently everybody wants to hang out with the Wigener staff although i guess that was just in our heads um, and we did a pub crawl around Scranton. That was the year that we got Bad Hair Day's hand. And you and I were just like, I don't even know. Like we had coolers on our back, like, and they weren't like normal size beers. Like they certainly weren't that can that you're drinking now. They were no. like as large as my head of beers in our backpacks. And I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> but fun. I remember <laughs> Someone will, I'm sure someone will tell this story. So I'm going to tell it from my memory first. Um, and again, I have a picture of it. So I have like a, 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 a space to start at. But I remember I was on the phone outside of Tanks. Mm, yes. Probably smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer. And a cop kept on asking me to like move back because I don't know what the law is. But apparently at that time that you were allowed to be like a certain distance from the bar and still be able to hold an open container. I don't know. 
Um, and the cop was like, you got to move back. You got to move back. And I just remember going, I am on the phone. You are being so rude. <laughs> oh, I remember that. And like, I remember like, again, memory in my head, like Rachel going like, T. Stein, shut the hell up and move back. <laughs> I, I feel bad for her. I feel like she like just had... <sighs> Like she was just this like the leader of misfits almost. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's what we call ourselves. We were the island of misfit toys. Yeah. Um, and she certainly was a I mean, she she took care of us so much. And like I remember, you know, like you talked about like going to her house and counting readers' choice ballots, and then um, I, I don't know if it was model of the year party or or it was it maybe concert for a cause. Like she'd be like, okay, you guys, you need to slow down. Let's go back. We need to eat something. You need yeah. to get something in your system. And um, that's when Dustin dumped that pizza on the white comforter at the Woodlands. Um, I was not there for that. He's going to kill me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I must have missed that part. Yeah, you definitely did. But, um, oh my God. But, yeah, that was when Janelle's like, I wasn't sure if I liked you, T. Stein, but because, you know, you've got an RBF, but. Oh, R- oh. <laughs> um, I'm the like, resting bitch that? face, right? Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, sorry, Janelle. Love you. Now I'm going to hide the phone. Um, uh, but yeah, that was like one of the my favorite memories that I tell people is when we um hid Janelle's phone in the rafters and just kept on calling it would she have like 49 missed calls <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> but it was so much fun oh, oh my gosh <laughs> were you there when we had to like decorate the office for Christmas and we wrapped like all the walls and stuff um, I don't remember exactly what we did, but I do remember, um, that Carlo won, um, over at the times leader. Remember he turned his desk into a gingerbread house. Like mm. that had to have been a fire hazard. He still has that picture. Like if you mention that, pic- I, I 100% guarantee he will post the picture because he still has it on his phone. Well, I death. feel, I don't know if I have pictures of pictures or if they do, if I have the actual, cause we had a, oh, what do you call it? Um, what are those cameras that take the, the Polaroids? Mm-hmm. We had Polaroid pictures of us mm-hmm. in the office. Yeah. Of do that Christmas. Of that Christmas. I, oh, just I that. Just pictures of us at Christmas. Yeah. Yes. And I think we put like, we we hung Polaroid pictures of ourselves as our holiday uh, ornaments on the tree. Huh? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. That is not a memory I have. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> but that was fun. I mean, we always we always did Secret Santa again because we were so close, and even we were even close with the interns. You know. Yeah. Parm's my realtor. I think he was your realtor, wasn't he? I mean, twice. Yeah. Yeah. I was like looking back at old, I don't know why. Again, so I'm a pack rat, I guess, because when I was looking for stuff to talk about, um, I searched something in my email and like I found all our old emails, like in my T Stein or my Tiffany Stein, yeah, email. Yeah. And I'm like, why do I still have this? Like, do I not clean out my emails? And then it occurred to me that I don't because I've got like 37,000 emails, I'm not joking. Um, on my phone that I still don't even look at, but I have uh, twenty eight thousand seven hundred seventy six. Yeah. yeah, we're probably giving a lot of people like aneurysms right now, like <laughs> even thinking about that number on their phone. I don't remember where I was going with the um, email. Your pack rat. Oh yeah, so I was looking for stuff and I found the old emails and then I was looking, I don't remember why I was looking in my desk for something, but I found like Damien's old uh, business card and I'm like, what? why Why do I have Damien's old business card? Like, what, that's, that's yeah, weird. That's odd. Um, but speaking of business cards, so that's what I was looking for. I was looking for, because I know when I left, like you had, you were still talking and emailing me stuff oh, and like telling me yes. like who was leaving and all this other garbage. And 
um, you know, I started that like the graveyard. I think I called it the graveyard. Maybe it was yeah. the, I mean, I think you changed it to the wall of death. Well, what I did eventually, so well, yeah, we can get into this. Um, it was the graveyard and we had them up like, along the top of our cubicle. And when you had left, I took over and I yeah. kept it because, going. Oh, that was our reasoning. So we should explain that it was the business card of everybody that has gone before us. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, the light. Um, uh, although like we're talking about the weekend are so fondly, so I don't know why we're like, oh my God, you got out before me. But anyway, so, um, and I think by the time I left, it was like up in the double digits. Yeah. Um, but so I would collect the business card of every person that had that left before me and it would lie in my whole entire cubicle wall. And then when I left, because you were technically there at the same time, like, I think I just took like the, the very first one away because I'm like, all of these people left before you too. So you can have the wall now. And, um, so yeah, I was looking for that picture and I, my last email from you in like 2008, told me that um, you sent it to my phone. And I'm like, oh, wow. So we were like, we were texting pictures back then, but I'm sure I had probably a Nokia phone and it was not saved anywhere. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's right. But then like, I had another message like 2009 or 2010 or something where I was like, congratulating you on whatever new role you were taking. I think it was like director of sales at that time. And, yeah. and you're like... <laughs> but they made me take down the wall. <laughs> they did. So I remember Rachel, I had it up there and then I, I, I had like a little box. It was like a small box where you get like 25 business cards. So I took the, I took the, um, I took them off the wall cause Rachel came over and, uh, I, and I didn't even like, I wasn't using it as a way to like, you know, these are the people who got out before me. It was, it was almost like a, a wall of, of memory for me. I'm very sentimental. I, I I keep a lot of things too. And I, and I started doing this because I just wanted to kind of like have an audio documentation of, of those moments. Um, because at this point in my life, they're getting kind of uh fuzzy. Um, so for me, it was just kind of like, you know, you know, you were up there and Janelle and Katie and Damien and, and, you know, the list goes on. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a way to kind of highlight the fact that there was a lot of turnover um, it was just kind of a way to, you know, keep them in our memory as they, yeah. they moved on. But yeah, she actually, she actually asked me to take those down. So I put them and in a box. Some people leaving, not to like pull out names or anything, but some people leaving were a lot harder to deal with than mm -hmm. others. Um, like, I don't like change. I stopped no. watching basketball because I didn't like when the teams were like when players would get traded to another team. So I'm like, no, can't go through that. That's too emotional. <laughs> um, and I remember like I was, I remember I was driving up to Scranton for something. It was Damien's last day. And um, I was getting text messages like, are you coming back to say goodbye to Damien? I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. Like I was, I broke down. Like I, I was like, no, I can't. I'm, I have a meeting. And I was, no, I wasn't. It was cause I was extremely emotional that Damien was leaving because like you guys were so close. We were so close. And yeah. I mean, I just, I knew that like things wouldn't be the same, like, and I wouldn't see him every day. And like, I don't know, like Damien's always been like a brother to me. So like, it was just really, really hard accepting that he wasn't going to be there any longer. Yeah. Um, in it fact, was because I hold grudges so well. Um, I don't think I ever gave Steve a fair chance because he wasn't Damien. So I was just like, okay, hey, hey, hi, new graphic guy, but yeah, I'm not Damien, so. Well, it's- it's I'm not gonna hang out at your desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was, that all played out well for me because I remember when Damien was leaving, that was 2006, I wanna say May, June-ish. Uh, it was warm out. Um, and I was just, I was the same way. Like, you know, for me, Damien was like an older brother that I never had. Um, and he was like married and like, you know, I think he had a kid or maybe yeah. even two at that point. I don't, I don't remember. Like he was just like this, this, this guy, like, yeah. Um, and he was a, he was a riot for one. We used to play, you know, we used to toss a ball back and forth over the cubicle walls on Tuesdays. And um, 
on Tuesdays. Like you only did it on Tuesdays. That's well, it, totally- it was more. It was more on Tuesdays because that's when. We, well, maybe it wasn't Tuesdays because he would have been really busy on Tuesdays. <laughs> you did it every day. All right, every day, whatever. Your location changed because again, one of my emails said, um, cause you're like, oh yeah, it's a lot more strict over here now. This was like 2009. You're like, it's a lot of business. No, a lot, not a lot of fun. And my response back was, so you're not laying on the couch playing catch. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. You know, it, well, it's funny. Like, yeah, we did that. There was always, I mean, that was a place that's like, I look back on now. I wish I could do over again to an extent because like, it was a job we got paid to do, but it wasn't hard. Like we had a lot yeah. of fun, you know, we had a lot of fun. And like, I, I look where I am now and how uh, more difficult it is, you know, and, and you know, it's, you know, I'm in media sales and, you know, the, the landscape has changed dramatically, not only with COVID, but especially with COVID. And, um, you know, it was such a more simpler time back then. I remember, you you know, you say a full page ad costs 700 bucks and then the owner of the bar or whatever it was, they're like, here you go, here's $700 cash. You know, it was like, not even a, now it's like, you say something costs money and it's like, well, I'll give you this much for it. Yeah. This is at a flea market. Yeah. It's so it's like, it's just a different game. Yeah. But, uh, but back to Damien, I would just, yeah, I was, I was, I was like, what's going to happen next? Cause my biggest fear was, um, you know, some, some joke coming in, right? Like some suit and tie, like you, yeah, some good. asshole that comes in like, and like just ruins what we had. So that's Get when I, I, what's that? Get going. Yeah. So that's when I called, I, I got, I remember I found out that Damien was leaving. He told me before, I think he told, you know, Rachel or Alan and I called Steve up. Steve Houston, he, he was a, a photographer and designer and, you know, he lived in the same apartment complex that I, that I lived in. And I said to him, I, I called him up. I said, get your shit together, get your resume together, get your portfolio together. Um, Damien's leaving the weekender. He'd be a good fit to kind of come in and uh, yeah. it all worked out. And he was, I mean, he was, he, he had all the talent that you needed for the yeah. job yep. and he fit in. He had the personality. Yeah. He was in a band. So yeah. that was like one plus. So, but yeah. So, but yeah, then everybody else started leaving after that. And, um, why well, was me the jokes? I have a picture of the, is, there's, it's you, me, Katie, Janelle, and Rachel. And it's like your number one sales and marketing team. And then, like, it would, it would be like, and then there were three. And then there were awesome. two and then there was one and it was me. Yeah. Uh, it's just funny how like that, that, uh, that job was always seen as a stepping stone uh, for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but you, I mean, you were there for a while, you know, you're, you're there for, you know, including your internship five years. Yeah. I, Cause you know? I loved it. I mean, and it was, it was, it was challenging to what I needed to be. And, I don't think I could do that job now as a mom. No. Um, but it, it, I mean, I, I still look at it as a stepping stone for me. It taught me a lot of things about who, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. And um, I, I, I think the relationships that we built there are like just such a learning experience because we learned how to, I mean, it was most of us, for most of us, it was our first job out of college. Yeah. Like you really learned how to be a good uh, colleague because it, that's where you learned it. I mean, you work, you work later on with people that like, you're like, what, is this your first job? Why am I, why are we still talking about this? Like, <laughs> you know, let that roll off your back. What, yeah. What's happening here? But like, like you learn that in your first job after college, you learn how to be a colleague, like not only like the job you're learning, you learn how to be a good colleague, a good person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause if you're a jerk. Well, I think it's, good. it's, it was a good place to, to kind of learn too, because, um, you know, you weren't walking into, uh, you know, a suit and tie job or, or, you know, where you were, 
meeting with lawyers and doctors and things like that. So, I mean, there was like, there were times where we could screw up and, and you know, learn. We did. And we did, we did, we, did we screwed okay. up. We had a lot of fun and we, we screwed up and, but we, it, we, you know, it was moments where we probably could have been fired. You know, Rachel could have been like, you know what, we're, we're done here. And, but again, it was a way for us to learn and, and grow. So, yeah. So do you, when you're looking back at your life at the weekender, like, do you look back at like different segments like, and think of your, your favorite moment, or do you have like an ultimate favorite moment from your time at the weekender? Cause it just spans so much. Like you went from an intern to a manager. Like I can't imagine that your, your memories of being an intern could hold a candle to, you know, the memories of having to like have people underneath you teaching and learning. Yeah. Well, I mean, by the time I got to to be at the GM, which was only for a year, it was such a different, it was completely different. It was night and day. I mean, as an intern, when I was there, I was young, you know, I wasn't jaded yet. I, I, I had this like view of the world that like, you know, there's endless opportunities. And as an intern, I said, one day I want to be the GM of this, this, this newspaper or this weekly or whatever you want to call it. And, um, I just thought, you know, it was one of those things you say when you're young and ambitious and, you know, if it happens, cool, but that's probably not going to happen. But I mean, it just, everything kind of just happened the way it needed to for that to happen. You know, Christy and Joe left a year, I think they left in 05, right before I even started full time. Um, so that opened up the, the GM position right then and there. And then we went with that one for, I think, a year. And then Rachel was named GM, I think, 2006. And then I just had to wait her out. <laughs> I had to wait her out. But, I mean, it was, it was different. It was a different product. It was a different, um, you know, different ownership and, and different procedures and, and the way things operated. And um, I don't know. Well, then, you know, you had social media kind of come in and, and kind of change the way – entertainment was consumed and advertised and all that kind of stuff. It was a different, just completely. Yeah. I mean, Facebook started when we were still in college. Well, it's, it, it was definitely started when I was in college, but at that time it was like, oh, God, I feel like, I feel like you had to have a college you email did. to even get a profile. So like businesses weren't even on it yet. Nope. Um, but yeah, I remember like that was one of the things I was charged with was starting a, a, uh, MySpace page for the weekender. And I'm like, again, you having to learn like MySpace taught people how to code right there. Like you had to HTML the crap out of your page to like make it fun, different yeah. colors and splash in here. And what music were you going to have at the background? And like, yeah. What a um, passive aggressive way that was like for the music. Right. Yeah. You know, if you're like in a bag like and just broke with your girlfriend, you, you, you put a, yeah, a sad song. On yeah, the but I remember like, well, for the week in our page anyway, like we were like, what band are we going to spotlight this week on our oh, week right. in our page, you know? Right. And like, looking back at that, like, we probably could have sold that space, that that shine. Sure. You are the audio of the week in our page on Wednesday. Like how much we would have been able to sell that for? Like, we'll play your album on Wednesday when the content goes live and yeah 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 just a different world yeah but and you can't even plan for that kind of stuff either it just kind of happens right yeah Things well that's what i remember with. like so you were an intern when facebook was just starting and i think that was your first cover wasn't it like we used your profile on the cover of the weekender did you yeah so that was we did a cover story on Facebook. Um, we used your profile picture. Yeah. Because I have an, I have an email going out to you saying, Hey John, send me that picture on your profile. We can't use the one that you actually oh, have. Yeah. You sent me the, 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 I can't remember all the other people that we use. I think we used Matt's brother and. I was on the weekend quite a few times and I forgot what? about that. Honestly, I feel like you pick up any old weekender right now and it's just all of our old friends. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like how many times did you see Amy and Amanda in a look what you missed? 
or uh, one of the tell us questions. And yeah. that was your, that was our jobs as interns. Like that was one of your job. You had to go out and do the tell us question. And I was like, okay, well, it's going to be all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah. Like, why not? Like, what color would you be if you were a crayon in a box of misfit crayons? <laughs> yeah. And even coming up with the questions, like that was an editorial intern question. Like, yeah. It seems like looking back on it, it just seems so wacky that those were our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like all the learning that went behind it, like those decisions and stuff. Like, you know, yeah. Someone's got to write a mad magazine. What's that? Someone's got to write mad magazine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh man. So yeah, going back to you, we, um, what is your. I don't think I have like a, like a, you know, specific memory. I mean, the whole, the whole thing is just, it was such a, uh, the whole, I mean, the whole nine years was just a, a moment, moments of my life that I'll, I'll never forget. I mean, I met my wife there, you know, like it's just crazy. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. There's no one thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that just kind of just make it what it was. Hmm. What about you? What's, is there one thing? Um, no, I think I look back at it. Um, and mine are like, like I said, like snapshot memories of favorite things and then favorite projects. Like I loved doing the, I'm with the band stories. I absolutely love doing the haunted house stories. Um, and mostly because I think it was fun to skip the line. <laughs> you know, you got a weekend or fast pass to skip the line. And then like, it was like 10 times scarier because they knew you were writing an article for them. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we did, I don't know if you were with me. I think Nikki definitely was because Nikki went with me at all to do a lot of those. Um, and we were at the old Hanson's amusement park where they turned that into. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. You made me like, go first. I had to go first in line to go, to go through the freaking Yeah, I remember. See, I'm not remembering it being you because you screamed like a girl. That's not true. There. I, I I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew when, no, what, what door no. led to where. Yeah. No, because I remember like we were still walking out to our car in the parking lot. I think they were hiding underneath yeah. cars, crawling yeah. out at us. And I'm like, do they do that for everybody, or is that just us? And I'm like, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah. Um, but but we, I mean, even when we weren't working, we were hanging out like in the beach house. The beach house. Yeah, Tiffany and two of her friends had a house in Kingston. They called the beach house. Because we are diehard 90210 fans. Sure. And I actually, when I celebrated my 40th birthday this year, it was 90210 themed. A lot of my friends. Um, yeah, you're 40. You're way older than I am. Again, I'm going to remind you when you turn 40, like next month. I got two years. <laughs> um, but yeah, the beach house was so much fun. Like that was like where we went after a lot of our events. And oh my God. Remember when you scared the flipping shit? Out of oh, out of Nikki. That was the best. And then asked her for a ride home and she gave it to me. He was such a good sport. <laughs> I remember the one time I was like, we were, Nikki and I were going out. And um, as you may remember, I have like, I'm so afraid of bugs. Like, I'll I'll give them the entire second floor. If I see a bug up there, like no, I'm good. You can have it. I'm I I'll use the bathroom down here. Um, and I was going out with Nikki somewhere and she called and she's like, Are you ready? And I'm like, No, I can't. And she's like, I can't. I'm like, I can't go. And she's like, Why? And I'm like, there's a bug in my room. And she's like, So and I'm like, I can't go in there and get ready. Like I'm still in my pajamas. Like, I can't go. And she's like, Oh my God, Tiffany, I will be right over to kill it. And, and she did. And like, um, but yeah, Nikki and I used to watch scary movies at night and she like took to them a lot better than I did. Like, I feel like eventually I started getting anxiety watching scary movies and I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, she was over and we were watching a scary movie and then you hid in the in my neighbor's garbage. Were you in the garbage can or are you just behind it? I don't remember. I don't think I was behind it. And you just like jumped out and you were wearing the mask, weren't you? I was wearing like a Jason mask, yes. Yeah, and I... I remember I was like, Amy and Amanda knew about it and 
um, you texted me and you're like, I'm, I'm outside, I'm outside, I'm, re- I'm ready, I'm ready. And I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to get her to leave. And I like, she thought that it was suspicious because I was literally pushing her out the door. And usually like I stand on the porch to make sure that she gets to her car. But like, I wanted to have like an aerial view of the scare. So like I pushed her out the door, closed the door, ran upstairs, Amy's room. And like, we're all huddled around her window and like we're like, oh, it's coming. It's coming. And, and like you, like, Oh my God, I that I, I don't know why there, not one neighbor came out to see if she was okay, but like she, cause that scream was like yeah. blood pulling and, and then you're like, oh, okay, can I have a ride home? <laughs> <laughs> it was only like a block and a half away, but she gave it to me in the bitch basket. She called it. The the bitch the... basket. So I was, um, Nikki used to live <laughs> in the Plains when she lived here. Um, and I was getting off at the Plains exit. And so the, her bitch basket was a Volkswagen Cabriolet. Am I saying that right? I have no idea what kind of Volkswagen it was, but it was right. a, a convertible. But anyway, so when she had her convertible open, like there was a little handle yeah. and it literally <laughs> looked like you could just pick her up and like, <laughs> um, so like it was no ill will calling her a bitch or anything. Like it literally just looked like a bitch basket. So like I was, I texted her. I'm like, I'm at the plane's exit behind a bitch basket. <laughs> Miss you. <laughs> Um, I remember the one day I was like, Nikki and I were going for lunch or something and she had to stop somewhere, but I also had an appointment to go pick up money from somebody. And, and she's like, just drop me off. Well, I think it was at CVS. It was on market street. She's like, just drop me off and take my car. I'm like, really? Like I've never driven a convertible before. Like, like it's any different, but like, I was so excited to drive a convertible. So I pull out of CVS and Market Street and I was just going down to like, I think I was going to Shock T or something. Um, that little plaza yeah. there. And it started fucking raining. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And like, I'm literally on Market Street. So I'm like, I obviously have to put the roof up because I don't want her car. And I start like driving and like her car was older. So I think that that's why I didn't have this safety mechanism on it. I don't think they should be able to do this. But like, I started putting the roof up while I was driving. <laughs> and I'm like, um, you know, like I, I saved the day, obviously, because her bitch basket was okay. But right. uh, I look back at that, I'm like, thank God I only had to go like two blocks because if I had, it was like, that was probably not a good move to no. put up the convertible roof. And if I was on 81, I probably wouldn't have had. It would have tore it off. Would it have? Oh my God. Probably if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's going up. Drive a convertible. Yeah, because if it's going up and that wind catches it, it probably would have. But the car was so small. Maybe the bitch basket would have just like. Maybe you would have flown away away with it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, Tiffany, I don't want to keep it too much longer. It is Saturday. Yes, it is Saturday. And yeah, my coffee's done. Are you you on your wine now? So I'm good. Are you on your wine now? No, I didn't. I actually poured water as well. Oh, okay. Um, I got a whole table over here. I've got like, yeah. And I'm on the floor. I, I should mention that. I'm on the floor because during the weekender staff meetings, we had one couch mm-hmm. and everybody either got on the couch or on the floor. And I think I was on the floor. Um, so I wanted to channel that that memory of being yeah. on the floor talking to you. Perfect. And the only thing I don't have is Carm walking behind us, tripping over the couch. That was the funniest moment ever. Carmen, when you fell over... <laughs> <laughs> he just fell flat too. And we no one, no one asked him if he was okay. <laughs> All started laughing. He's an intern. And we're like, what what happened to you? <laughs> Great moments. Oh, Great moments. Yeah. All right. Thank you for doing this. Uh, yeah. I hope you have a, a wonderful and healthy and safe and all that kind of stuff. Uh new year Here's in 2021. 2021 man. Yeah. I think the first six months are going to be a bit um, of the same, unfortunately. Yeah, but. I think so too. And then when the bar is open, we're going to have a week in a reunion. Yes. Stay tuned. Open tab. You could do your podcast from there. Yeah. We'll do it live. Tab. We'll do it live. We'll have to go to Hops for that. They're the only ones that would let us do that and trust yes. that we can stay. That is true. <laughs> That'd be a good time, but... All right, Johnny. Thank you. Love you. All right, love you too. We'll see you. Bye.